incremento mi capital social. Fíjense, aquí no buscamos capital financiero, ¿qué buscamos primeramente? Capital social. Y el capital social tú lo traduces en capital financiero. Así es que se lidera la economía de la información. Y si, when you do more with less, you have more availability to serve other people. And when you have availability, availability to serve other people, what do you build? Influence upon other people. And that builds your, your, your leadership and your social, social, social capital. And your social capital is what eventually you can translate into financial capital. But you first have to have social capital. Yes? I cannot ask something of Anna if I have not made a deposit in Anna's mind and heart. I cannot withdraw from an account if I have not deposited first therein. So if, if you're going to build a business based on people, you have to be in, you have to have, you have to build the, ad, the habit of sowing into other people's minds and hearts, of serving them without asking anything in return. Without asking anything in return. You see, los principios, los principios que te permiten ser un líder en la economía de la información son principios que no hacen sentido. Son principios que nos dicen que se sube como yo van y bajando que se recibe como dando, que se vive como muriendo, y ser primero siempre. That's how you build social capital. Adam is asking, Adam, what did you just say? <laughs> <laughs> no, Adam, the, the principles whereby we build this so-called social capital don't make sense. They don't make sense, because what, what do these principles tell us? These principles tell us that you rise by folly. Yes? How do, how do I rise by... By, by falling to pick Adam up, or, or vice versa. How do I receive? First and foremost, by giving. But we also want, we, we, we're, we're always focused on receiving. Oh, what's in it for me? What's in it for me? It's not, it's not about what's in it for you. It, it, it's about what, what is it that you can do for other people. There are people out there that may not necessarily do the business in accordance to the score, but the score in itself is gold. You see, my wife is a violinist. My heart without her is like a stringless violin, like a keyless piano, like supply without the man. Yeah. She plays Bach, Mozart, Tchaikovsky, Beethoven. You see? Tchaikovsky, Beethoven, Bach, they, they wrote the score. My wife's job as a violinist is, is to interpret what the composer wrote. You see? If you're going to interpret score, you... <coughs> are compelled to study it and not do it. You can do it your way, but paying attention to the core principles without compromising the core principles. Yes, that's very important. Like, my wife, she's Latina. So she interprets Tchaikovsky, but she, she adds a Latin sauce to it, yes, without compromising the core, yeah? But she cannot turn Tchaikovsky into merengue or salsa bachata. Does it make sense? Does it make sense? So the, 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 the same thing happens with baby score. You can add your own flavor, but the fundamental recipe needs to be, needs to be preserved and enhanced and strengthened. Does it make any sense? Yeah. Okay. Now, before I go any further, I want Mike to tell me how much time I have. How much time I have? Thirty minutes. Thirty minutes. Beautiful. Before I go any further, I, I, forty-five minutes. Forty-five. Beautiful. Listen. Before I go any further, I, I really want to make sure that all of us are on the same page with regards to what is information, because this is a this is a training and development session about the information economy. Well, what what is information, guys? What is information? But in, in order for, for, for us to do attention, interest, desire, action, we, we first have to know that the nature of what we're using to get people's attention. What is information? Come on, this is not a monologue. Vanessa, ¿qué es información? Lo primero que te viene a la mente. Conceptos. Conceptos. Bien, ¿qué más? Corrección. Conocimiento. Algo que uno no. Ah, interesante. Vamos a ver todo eso. Now, let's talk about business intelligence. Business intelligence, which has to do with information, is the process whereby we transform data into information for decision making. It's a process whereby we transform data into information for decision making. I first want to point out 
Shupa, that this is intelligence is a process. Can you say the word process with me? Process. It's a process. It's not an event. It's not that I came to a training and development session with this guy from the Dominican Republic and all of a sudden, boom, no. That's an event. What we're trying to make happen with this amazing group of people is growth. And growth is a process. And in my view, it's a painful process. It's a painful process. How many of you go to the gym? I know Christian goes to the gym. Christian, you go to the gym, man. You, you, you hit the irons every, every now and then. Oh, I did so. So when this man picks up a, a weight that he has never picked up before, the next day his muscle is going to hurt. Because he, he wants to grow. See, if you want to grow in your business, you have to do things that you have never done before. And do it consistently. You see, he cannot build his bicep another three or four inches if he just lifts a 50 pounder dumbbell one time. <laughs> How do you get definition? How do you get profitability in business? It's by doing the same thing repeatedly and systematically. Series and repetitions. Series and repetitions. Why? Why? Because you are in the people business. And in order for people to trust you, Adam, they need to see you frequently. They need to see you more than once. You see, in order for you to transform a prospect into a client or a partner, he needs to see you at least between five and seven times. Between five and seven times. I proved it. I, I built a practice from scratch in Miami. I didn't know anybody. I moved from Boston to Miami without knowing a soul, and I started knocking on doors. Started knocking on doors. I came down. I went down there. With, with the definition of business intelligence very clear in my mind and I knew what I needed to do in order to achieve the destination, in order to get to the destination. What was my destination? Well, I needed $250,000 under my management within two months of me being in Miami. $250,000 without any pre-existent capital, without any pre-existent social capital in mind. So I needed to I needed to get to critical mass. Say with me, critical mass. We need to get to critical mass. Critical mass, but what do you want to amass is the question. Do you want to amass the raw material, Adam? Do you want to amass the raw material? What is the raw material that goes into the suit? Let's say that it's cotton. Let's say that I want 10,000 suits at the end of the month of, uh, what is it, May? I have to ask myself the question, well, how many tons of cotton do I need in order to produce 10,000 suits, 10,000 jackets, what have you? With that, say that it is two, two tons of cotton. If I don't have two tons of cotton, I'm not going to be able to produce 10,000 suits. So, the suits that I wanted to produce, $250,000. I looked at my colleagues' numbers and I said, well, that, that is a failure rate and that's the success rate. I need to contact 500 people in two months. So I went every day and I didn't go back to my house if I didn't have at least between 15 and 22 contacts, new contacts in my pocket, under my belt. But when I, when I, when I, I was on the streets and I met Adam, what is your last name, Adam? Keita. Keita. I have, you see, I have to practice my version. <laughs> if I say it with, with, with an American, I'm just going to butcher his, uh, his last name. <laughs> cater, cater. You see, Adam Cater. Beautiful. I mean, you need to cater to people's needs once I get Adam Cater. So, I met Adam. Yes. Uh, I was out and about in the neighborhood and I said, hey, Adam, I, I'm new. I'm new in London and I just want to get to know the community here. What do you do for a living? He says, Oh, that's great, man. For how long have you been here? 10 years? That's amazing. I can probably learn a lot from you. Uh, here's my contact information. I know you're very busy. Can I have yours? Beautiful. See you later, alligator. You know, wow, everybody. <laughs> but what do I do with Adam's info? I put it in a database. And I do the same thing with the 15 other people that I met today. Because what am I what am I in the process of doing? I'm in the process of transforming data into information. You see? What I did, I'm gonna tell you what I did. I, I'm not gonna tell you what I did, but I'm gonna tell you what I did. Yes? After doing that for two months, and every day as I did it, 
I, I loaded all of that data into a database, and I met Adam and 15 other people today. And uh, at the end of the day, I would send a handwritten note to each and every Jew, one of my new contacts, a handwritten note, and I would go into the mail. And I would, and I would write a note to self to give Adam and the 15 other and the 15 other people that I met, a call back within a week. Yes? So I met Adam, database, handwritten note. A week later, hey Adam, this is Jonathan, how are you, sir? Uh, remember me? Oh, yes, Jonathan, thank you for the card. Yeah, if I hadn't sent him the card, oh, Jonathan, you? Oh, yeah, or what? I have to cultivate the relationship. What did I do when I, when I wrote him a handwritten note? I was catching his attention. This guy is different. This guy is different. He's not just sending out a text message or a WhatsApp. He's doing something different. You see? And he's giving me a call. And I'm saying thank you. Oh, thank you, Adam, for the 30 seconds that you uh, that you gave me that day that I, that I met you initially. Yes. Oh, listen, I'm going to be by your office uh, next week, Adam. I have some interesting information that I would like to share. Um, actually, I'm going to be there on Tuesday. What's better for you, Monday or afternoon? I just want to go really quickly and, and drop some information by your desk. Oh, Jonathan, come here by the afternoon. What is he giving me? He's giving me permission. He's giving me permission. I'm not going to just show up and say, hello, I'm here, Adam. He's giving me permission. And if he gives me permission, the conversation is going to be more amenable, more conducive to this. What is this? Action. Actually, saw out that this is transfer for action. You see? That's what I want. Action. Action. You see? But he's giving me permission. You see? There are two kinds of marketing. You have interruption marketing and you have permission marketing. I'm actually going to recommend a book. Not any of my books. All of my books are okay. Yeah? But um, the book that I'm recommending is the following. Permission Marketing by Seth Golden. Have you all have heard of this book? Permission Marketing. Permission Marketing. How to turn strangers into friends and friends into customers. How to turn strangers into friends and friends into customers. Yes? This guy, Seth Golden, who is an authority in marketing. Yes? Oh, you're good. Thank you. You're very good. Well, actually, let me, let me hide you from yourself. Thank you, sir. And now I have a better voice. <laughs> All of a sudden, you see, I didn't have a bridge shot, so. <laughs> That's magical water right now. Now, permission marketing. Permission marketing. What is the other kind of marketing? Interruption marketing. Interruption marketing, as opposed to permission marketing, is general and is impersonal. So Adam and I are watching TV, and all of a sudden we're watching, say, the news, Sky News, or the Bibby say. And all of a sudden there's a commercial. Yeah, well, what did the commercial? They interrupted us. We were watching the news. We are watching the news. We didn't give them permission. They just, you know, showed up. And, and they're probably advertising lipstick. We're not interested in that. Yeah? It's impersonal. They don't know us, and they're, they're showing us something that we're not in the, look, in the, in the lookout for. See, permission marketing, as opposed to interruption marketing, is not as personal and it's not general. It's personal. Now, I know Adam caters to him. You see, I've seen him once, I wrote him once, and I called him once, and I'm going to visit him next week. You see, it's personal, but it's not only personal, it's anticipated. Because this guy is anticipating me next week, Tuesday afternoon. I'm going to drop by to uh, uh, put some information on this. And as I engage in conversation with him, I'm going to make sure that whatever information I, I uh, make a call to action on is relevant to what he wants. You see? Relevant, personal, and what? Anticipated. And I'm more likely to do business with Adam than if I just engage in, in, in interruption marketing. Than if, than if I just put a post on Instagram or on LinkedIn or on Facebook and just, you know, sponsor the post with 100 pounds. You see? And I know, how many interactions have I had with Adam already? Like three or four. I'm getting to the fifth, right? And the sixth and the seventh. Because in permission marketing, what works is not reach. You see, when, when you look at your uh, Instagram post, it says reach 5,000. Oh, I've reached 5,000 people. Irrelevant. You know what works in permission marketing? Frequency. 
If you ask me, Chuba, Jonathan, what do you prefer? To reach 1,000 people one time or to reach 100 people 10 times? Given the nature of the information dynamic, I would say I would rather reach 100 people 10 times. Because I want to build trust with those 100 people. Because I want to be able to gather what? If I'm in the information economy, what do I mine? Mine as, not mine the gap, mine as, M, as, as in, as in, M, I, not as in mine, but minar. Mine, the minar. What do I mine? Data. We mine data. I need his information. How old is he? What does he want? Um, uh, if I'm a financial advisor, how much money does he have available to invest, etc. Yeah? I want to mine data in order to transform data into what? Information. In order to what? To lead my market into a decision. Inteligencia empresarial. El proceso mediante el cual transformamos datos en información para qué? Para la toma de decisiones. Business intelligence, the process whereby we transform data into information for what? <coughs> for decision making. Because even if we decide not to decide, we still have to decide not to go back to remind us what we decide. Now, what is data? Data or values? Values. There are qualitative or quantitative values. What is information? Information is relevant to data. Información son datos dotados de relevancia y finalidad. Information is data clothed with relevance and purpose. You see, uh, y finalidad. So if, if I'm going, we're in a partnership, Mike and I. Everybody wants to be like Mike. Vamos, eh, okay, the, the weather in Buenos Aires, Argentina. That's data. Yes? How does it become information? Asked? It could, it could, it could. But we need to, but we need to tailor it. By spreading it, but we need to tailor it. Who's interested in the weather in Buenos Aires? People in Buenos Aires and those that are going to Buenos Aires. You see, if, if I'm not going to Buenos Aires or I live in Buenos Aires, then that's just data. You see, sometimes we're just throwing data at people, guys. I want to see where this where this guy wants to go. In order for him, in order for me to throw information at him. You see? He's not interested in, 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 in the fact that I've been in such a place or here or there that, or that I've achieved this or that. He's interested in, in, in that which is in correspondence with his needs, wants, and capabilities. So if we want to be leaders in the information economy, we have to first become acquainted with the actors in the information economy. 